Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today's down and dirty. We're going to start getting into GPS, 3D machine control, which is what we know in the field as GPS. We're talking about GPS. That's what happens when you work with Rick the Dick, when you're trying to make a video. This guy. This guy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty. We're talking about GPS. Uh, I've had a previous video where we talk about the difference between 2D and 3D machine control. You can click up here for that. It gives you kind of a quick breakdown. We're talking about GPS, we're talking about 3D machine control. So today we're gonna start with bare basics of kind of what a rover in a base station is and why that is the kind of base of every GPS kit you see on the market. So we have to kind of understand how GPS works. The way GPS works is essentially we have a base station, which is gonna be this guy right here. And when I say this guy, I literally mean this puck right here. Everything else is just a supporting tripod. This is the actual brains of the unit. And it really, to be specific, this is more of a receiver and transmitter. So what this is going to do is it's going to communicate with our rover over there, which is then going to communicate to our tablet. We'll get into that. So this is our base station here. This is our rover. And again, when we're talking about the rover, really the two elements of this rover are the tablet and the puck. So why do we need a rover and a base station? Well, if you think about it, if we just have this rover, what this is doing, this guy right here is receiving signals from satellites up in the air. And all of these satellites are using trigonometry to figure out exactly where this little rover is on the face of the Earth as we walk around our job site. And it can do that in three dimensions. So we can go left and right, we can go this way and towards the camera and up and down. We can figure all of that out just by triangulating from the satellites way up there. Then that all gets fed into this, which is how we kind of control everything. This is where we really do all of our operation, is the piece of software that's on our tablet. But meanwhile, it's always communicating with this guy to know exactly where we are in space. Well, then why do we need a base station? Which, by the way, I do want to, I do want to talk about one quick thing here. You're going to notice that these two pucks look very similar. In some systems, including this one, some pucks will actually do double duty. So this guy right here is actually a model that can be used as either a rover or a base station. And you can go into the software on this and you can tell it, hey, today you're gonna be a rover, don't act like a base station. And so we would march around with it as a rover. Or tomorrow we're like, hey buddy, you're gonna be a base station again. So you need to set up as a base station. This guy over here is a different model. You can see by the antenna placement, he's only going to be a rover. He does not have the real brains to be a base station. Maybe one day, bud. So anyway, why do we need this base station? Well, if you think about it, this is where we get kind of scientific with, with our construction toys. We're communicating with satellites up in the atmosphere, and you may think that that's like a laser beam of communication. It's just an absolute straight line, bounce a signal up, bounce a signal back, and we take a measurement. Well, the problem is you have all sorts of stuff that's going on in between, like today, cloud cover. You've got atmospheric distortion based on conditions, whether it's air temperature, you've got geomagnetic, geomagnetic storms that are going, there's all sorts of stuff. So that signal as it's coming down, it's got a little waviness to it, which means it's not an exact number. But what we're able to do is we're able to get a whole bunch of satellites talking so that we can get pretty accurate, but we still need to get more accurate than that. And if you think about it, if I'm taking my little rover and I'm just marching myself all over the job site, there's no constant for me to compare this signal to with my satellites so that I know how much of those atmospheric conditions and all the stuff we just talked about, we don't know how much that's playing a, a, an impact. Hence, Mr. Base Station. We're going to set this guy up on a known point. And we're creating that known point, by the way. I could make one right here. I could pound a hub right here and I could make sure that that is my known point that we're always gonna set this base station up on when we're on this site. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tablet and we're gonna Bluetooth connect to this guy right here. 
And then we're gonna tell them, hey, first of all, bud, you're gonna be a base station today because I already have a rover, don't worry about it. And then what we're gonna tell them is, hey, I want you to take a measurement off of all those satellites you see, and I want you to figure out where you are on the face of the planet. And, th and I, you know, it's not fancy worded like that. It's actually more sophisticated wording on the, on the prompts, but that's literally what we tell it to do. We tell it to take a measurement and it's gonna figure out our northing and our easting. And then it's also gonna give us an elevation above sea level. Now there's one other key piece of information we need to give it. And that is the distance from the tip of this point right here up to on this particular model, the bottom of this orange line. And what that tells Mr. Base Station is, hey, I know relative to the Earth, I'm at 856 feet above sea level, but I don't know how far I am above the ground right here. And so we have to give it that piece of information. And guess what? That's all there is to setting up a base station. It's not scary, it's not terrifying, it's not intimidating, that is it. I can roll up and pull this thing out of my truck and within about three minutes, maybe four minutes, I will be totally live with my base station functional. Now, assuming I'm on the same side I was on yesterday and I don't have to go change any settings, I can literally plug and play that. I mean, I'm roll up, take it out, screw the top on, set it over my point, turn it on, boom, and walk away. I can go set up my rover. Now, once we've got our base station set up, we're gonna go into here. We're gonna Bluetooth connect back to this guy. So now our tablet is our rover. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it the distance from the ground to this puck. So our, no, our rover now knows how tall it is. And then the beauty and the magic of the base station and the rover come together because as we're walking around, our rover's going, hey, I know there's some error because of all this atmospheric stuff, but what's the error? And that's where the base station here pipes up and goes, hey, I'm a known point. I haven't moved at all, but the satellites told me I moved a foot and a half to the left here. So whatever measurement you're getting, Mr. Rover, I need you to move it a foot and a half to the right to compensate for that. And it's doing this 60, I don't even know, I don't even know the frequency, but probably 60 to 100 times a second. It's making all of these little corrections. And that's how we're able to get really, really accurate readings with this equipment is because these are both communicating with the same satellites and the base station is communicating to my rover what the error is in our signal. And that's what I'm gonna leave you with today. I don't wanna make this super overly complicated. The whole goal behind this is to kind of let you slowly digest what GPS is and how it works. And that's really what we're doing here today. This is the core of any GPS system right here. Because guess what? When we go put a machine control on our skid steer or you get a GPS dozer, it's the exact same thing as your rover, except it's on a machine and it's telling the machine where it's at. And it's still communicating to the base station instead of your, let's, let's say we had a dozer on site. The dozer doesn't care about this. Who, go, who cares about the rover? It's its own thing, we don't even care about it. But the dozer's gonna hone in on Mr. Base Station and go, hey bud, I need a correction too. I'm out here moving around, what's my error? So that is literally the only purpose of that base station is for giving those corrections. So I hope this has been helpful. This is the first video in a whole series I plan on doing. I do wanna give a big shout out to Unicontrol for putting this sort of technology in the hands of smaller contractors at a price we can afford. That is the only reason we're able to do this and I am super grateful for that. So we will catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty where we continue the GPS series. See you guys.